Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Today we're going to be looking at a new power station. Now this is the Opez 600 watt power station. It comes in at $529. There is currently a $140 coupon on Amazon to bring the price down to $400. Now this is a lithium iron phosphate power station, which means it has up to 2000 life cycles without the battery degrading or losing capacity. And it has no fire risk. This supports max charging of 160 watt input through dual charging mode which is really awesome has a really nice display it has 595 watt hours of storage and it has a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter now hopefully i have piqued your interest you know me i'm going to test all these claims make sure everything stacks up find out if there's any quirks or weird things about the battery so you guys can know if it's something you'll want to buy at the end of the video now let's just go ahead and dive right into it we're going to take a look at the front display first so here's the front of the power station. The first thing I want to talk about in detail is this display. So let me zoom in the camera and you can see it a little bit closer. The first thing you'll notice is this large percentage. This basically tells you how much battery is left. And around that, there's this blue ring that serves two purposes. One of the purposes is that each of these sections represents 16%. So as the battery capacity drops, they start disappearing. The other thing is when you're charging the battery or have an input on the battery, you'll basically get a spinning blue circle around this showing that it's charging. Right below this, you have an estimated runtime at the current load. So you see it, we're pulling five watts out of the battery. So it's estimating it's gonna last 75 hours at that load. Now let me take a second to talk about the input and output watts here at the top. Now this is only gonna display which one's higher. Now let me explain what's currently happening. Now I have a load plugged into the AC adapter. It's pulling 112 watts and I have it charging via the power delivery port at 59 watts. But because the output watts is higher, it's gonna show that just to give you an idea that your battery is going down over time. And then if we were to unplug this load here and it showed the uh, input wattages, then that would give you the overall feeling that your battery is going up. But I would have liked to see this alternating between input and output wattages every three seconds or so. You can also turn the display off to save power by tapping the power button. If you ever want to turn it on to check, you can just tap the power button again. So this power station has a lot of different plugs where you can plug in different appliances. Let's talk about the 12 volt output first. Now all the 12 volt output is regulated at 13.5 volts on this device. So that's a really good level. Shouldn't have any issues running CPAP machines, 12 volt compressed fridge, or any 12 volt appliance at all. Now you get three connections in this 12 volt output. You get a cigarette plug with a dust cover and you get two 5521 barrel connectors. Now this entire circuit is rated at 10 amps. And during my testing, I was actually able to get around 11.5 amps or 160 watts out of this before it shut down from uh, using too much power. So pretty good results. Now I wanna go ahead and show you guys some discharge testing to see the capacity we get through the battery while using the 12 volt output. Let's go ahead and dive right into that. So what we're doing is we're using this DC load to bring the battery all the way down to 0% so we can see how much capacity is inside. So we have the load set at 119 watts. That's a 0.2C discharge rate. Let's run this down to 0% and see how long it lasts and what capacity we get at the end of the test. Okay, we hit 0% capacity and it disabled the DC output. Let's go ahead and take a look what we got. We pulled 504 watt hours out of the battery over a four hour and 24 minute time period. That's about 38 amp hours. Now this battery is rated at 595. So this 504 is about 85% of the rated capacity. And that's pretty normal for most of the power stations that I've tested. In fact, I've never had a power station test at 100% rated capacity. Now I did do this test twice. I'll throw a screenshot up and I got very similar results over a very similar time period. So this is what I'll expect to get out of this battery every time I draw it all the way down. Let's go ahead and talk about the USB ports on this device. If you push this button, it'll turn it on. You can see on the screen it's enabled. And you have three different ports. You get a USB-C power delivery port, which supports 60 watts, and you get two USB-A ports that support Quick Charge 3.0. So you can charge phones, tablets, or even laptops using these USB ports. Now there's another cool feature about this power delivery port. Now if you plug in a power source into this port here, you can see we can actually charge it via the USB-C port. We're getting 58 to 57 watts input. So if we plugged in the wall adapter on this side or a solar panel, in addition to this USB-C port, we could charge this faster at about 150 to 160 watts input. So pretty cool that this supports dual charging. 
Let's go ahead and talk about the built-in inverter on this power station. Now this is a pure sine wave inverter. It has two AC outlets and you can turn it on and off by pushing this power button. It's rated at 110 volts at 600 watts. It can also support a thousand watt surge. Now I always like to do a max load test on these inverters. So I did test this at about 610 to 606 watts for over 15 minutes. The internal fan turned on to keep it cool. And during that test, it put out near 110 volts at 60 hertz, so it all lived up to its advertising claims. Now it's important to know how efficient these inverters are, so I always like to charge it all the way up and then do a inverter discharge capacity test. Let's go ahead and jump into those results to see how it did. Now you can see I have 113 watt load on the battery, so we'll go ahead and let this run and see what we get at the end of the test. You can see we're getting an EO2 error. So I looked at the manual, that means low voltage protection. Now the sad thing is, is I didn't catch it on my camera. Now it hit 10% and I was like, oh, let me go get my camera. I'll set up a time-lapse so we can watch this turn off. And by the time I got back, it hit 9% and shut off. So just be aware, 9% uh, is your battery cutoff. So you're not gonna get you know, anything else out of this battery when it shows 9%. Now, right before this shut off, I saw it roll over from 0.46 over to 0.47. So that means we got 470 watt hours out of the AC inverter. Let's go ahead and do some math. Okay, so the battery is rated for 595 watt hours and using the inverter, we got 470 out of it. So if we divide 470 by 595, it gives us an efficiency of 79%. Some of the best power stations out there, you're gonna get an 85% on the inverters. Let's go ahead and talk about charging up this power station. Now it comes with four different ways to charge it up. And on the side, you have an eight millimeter or 7.9 millimeter barrel connector. So it's compatible with a lot of other chargers and solar panels on the market. Now, the first way to charge it up is by using the included wall charger. Now you can plug this into an AC outlet in your house. You can run it off a AC generator, or even if your car has an AC inverter built in, you can use this to charge up the battery. The max power I saw while using this was 97 Watts. Now the next way to charge the battery is by using this included 12 volt socket cable. You plug this into either another battery or in your vehicle while you're driving down the road uh, while the engine's running and you can charge up this battery around 72 watts. The third way to charge it is by using a USB-C power delivery cable. Now on the front of this, there's a USB-C power delivery port and it actually accepts an input charge. So you can get around 58 watts charging while using a cable like this. Now it's pretty cool because you have the power delivery on the front and you have the side eight millimeter connector so you can have dual charging. If you plug both those in, you can get about 150 to 155 watts. Now that's pretty respectable for this unit. A lot of power stations only charge at 100 watts so having 155 watts is pretty good. Now the last way to charge this up is using solar panels. Now I have a ton of solar panels I wanna test with this. Let's go ahead and take this outside and see how it does with some solar testing. So I'm excited to do some solar testing on this. Now the conditions aren't perfect. It's a little bit later in the day and we have a lot of wildfire smoke and haze. So I am gonna over panel this power station. What that means is I'm gonna stack three panels in parallel within voltage tolerances. So this accepts 12 to 30 volts. These are 12 volt panels in parallel. So the voltage is gonna be the same, but the amperage is gonna add up to the max power that this is going to let in. So this shouldn't cause any damage. We're basically gonna to try to get max power by stacking these panels in parallel. Let me go ahead and show you the skies right now. Now here's what it looks like. All this smoke and particulate is basically stopping the sun from hitting the panels, so it's taking down the power quite a bit. But that's the benefit to over paneling. If you have clouds or smoke or anything like that, you can still get max power in your power station. Let's go ahead and see what we're getting. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in. Wow, look at that, 113 watts. I think this is rated at 100 watts, but we're getting more than that, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'd say max power input on this would be around 112, 113 watts via solar. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so one other trick to get more power into this power station. Remember, it supports USB-C charging. So a lot of these panels have USB-C ports. So I just lay out another panel, take my USB-C cable and plug it in to the unit and I'd get an additional probably 30 to 35 watts charging. So not only get 113 uh, watts from this, but maybe almost close to 150, maybe 145. That's pretty decent on this power station. Remember, the Blue Audi EB series get 160 watts via solar. 
So with a little bit of trickery, you could get almost that same uh, charging potential out of this battery. Now, I recently picked up this Lazy Susan and I've been dying to use it. So look at this, guys. Woo! <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to talk about this LED light. Now, a lot of power stations have that little spotlight on them. Now, this has a really good integrated LED light. It is a diffused LED light and has three settings. It has the low mode. It has high mode, and then it has my, uh, you know, normal party dance mode, SOS, emergency mode, as I like to call it. So yeah, very good LED light. It's definitely bright enough to light up, um, you know, the tent that you're in, or, you know, a camper that you're in, or even, you know, a room if you're trying to eat dinner, prepare food, if the power's out and you need some light, this is definitely a good light to have. Now, I thought it'd be helpful to give you guys a closer look while I read off some specifications, talk about the build materials. This battery comes in at 15.2 pounds or 6.9 kilograms, and it's completely built of plastic. I like how it has this nice handle on the top. It's ergonomic and it's really durable. Now, this is very similar to the Jackery or EcoFlows that have the handles on the top. Looking at the sides, you can see there's a built-in fan that pulls the air from the inverter um, and the batteries out to keep it cool. Overall, I'm happy with the build quality and I don't have anything that, uh, you know, stands out as an issue in my mind. Now let's go ahead and talk about pricing per watt hour. It's really important to know what you're getting for your money on each of these power stations. Now with this one, you buy it at $400 with the applied coupon and it's about 504 watt hours. So dividing those out, you get this power station for 79 cents per watt hour. Now looking at the Bybean budget power station, comes in around the same price, $400, but you get a little bit more capacity at 568 watt hours. So it comes out to be about 70 cents per watt hour. Now looking at the Blue Eddy EB55, it costs a little bit more money, $450, and you get 478 watt hours of storage. Dividing those out, you get about 94 cents a watt hour for that power station. Now, of course, price isn't everything. Some of those power stations charge faster, they have more capacity, or they have more features and outputs, better brand names, or even longer warranties. So it's just important to know what you're getting for your money, and you have to pay attention to a lot of different features and basically balance them out to determine what works best for you. Okay guys, we've come to the end of the video. We did the AC discharge test. We did the DC discharge test. We did solar testing. We tested the inverter. We basically did everything on this battery and overall it passed basically with flying colors. Now, the pricing is just my only worry with this because it comes in at $400. That's an excellent price with the coupon, but who knows how long that coupon is gonna last. You always gotta be paying attention to pricing and availability of all the other power stations around. Now, hopefully this video was really helpful. My job in this video is to give you all this information so you know if this is gonna be a reliable and good power station and everything tested out really good. I did like the higher charging uh, input, especially with the dual charging um, with 155 watts. I like that this has lithium iron phosphate cells. Now there's no risk of fire and you have a really long life of the batteries inside. Now, one other thing I wanna talk about is this warranty card. Now, this does come with a two year warranty. So if you ever had any issues, you could contact the company and reach out to them. The only problem is this warranty card and the owner's manual does not have a phone number or email to contact. So. Lopez, if you guys are watching the video, go ahead and put your contact information down below in a comment so they can reach out to you if there's any issues with this battery and they wanna get this warranty fulfilled. Now, anytime you purchase a power station like this, right when you get it, I always recommend completely discharging it, charging it back up, testing all the outputs, make sure everything works so that you know you have a good power station. I also recommend reading through the owner's manual so you know how to use it and if there's any warnings or anything that you'd you know, have a question about, the owner's manual does a great job explaining that. Now, I've done a ton of information. This video is getting a little bit long. Now, if you guys have any questions about it, go ahead and throw a comment down below and I'll get back to you and hopefully I can answer Answer your question. Stay tuned for future content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.